now I pay the fee Like tell her, tell that's he to heat Let's leave his brain on side street I ain't got no dollar inside my pockets I could barely eat Up all night they shopping and I'm walking I can barely sleep I need an arm and head Cardi ain't loving the leg Arm and leg What's good with it do YouTube family? It's your boy King, it's your boy King Reacts Back here with another lit reaction video for y'all today, man And as you read by the title today, man I'm coming y'all. I'm coming to y'all with a reaction to one of Young Boy's interviews. Um, he just did a full episode interview with Rap Radar. Um, so yeah, man, it's about thirty something minutes long. We're gonna go ahead and see what's talking about, man. If you ain't know, Young Boy been out here staying out the way for the most part. You feel me? And it seemed like I've been hearing a lot of shit saying his mental been switching up and all that, but. We gonna see what it's talk about, man. I heard some people saying old oh, young boy coming back. I heard some people saying he completely done. He gone out the way. All that shit, man. I don't, look, I be too busy worried about my own stuff. I don't keep up with all the internet shit all the way for real. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. But look, man. Like I said, we gonna go ahead. and We gonna get to the NBA Young Boy full episode interview reaction, man. If you're new to the channel, go ahead down below. Drop a subscribe button, man. I truly appreciate that. We on the road to 800 subscribers right now, dog. If you're not new to the channel, if you're an old subscriber, again, I appreciate you for tuning into this video, man. Share the video with like two or three friends that you believe will fuck with the channel, rock with the channel, man. Tell them hit that subscribe button, drop a like, turn on the post bell notifications, man. As we continue to grow together as a family, as a culture, as a community, you feel me? But look, man, I ain't gonna keep talking. Y'all head off and shit. We gonna go ahead. We gonna get to this reaction video. See what young boy talking about, man. Let's see what he really on. Let's see what that boy really on. Yeah, it's Rap Riddle Podcast. So we will see. You got this is on video, man. Yeah, we on video. <laughs> I feel like the young guns and the uh, no bell love. Ask Lord Woman is finally advancing, man. We uh, this is gonna be Rap Riddle Podcast. So they gotta be a young boy's crazy. That's what it looked like, anyways. Yeah, it looked like that Utah snow. We are in a great state of Utah, talking to the the most prolific artist in the game, one of the most streamed artists. NBA young boy. Oh, young boy, look at that. It's his crib. He invited us. Can you believe it? Can't believe it's it. Exclusive conversation, man. Shout out to Bill Boy. They did that thing, but it's about him sitting down with the culture and really letting him know the mindset he's into right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited, man. You ready to get in there? I'm excited. I've never been to Utah, man. <laughs> I've never met young boy, so this is going to be an exciting experience. It's, it's cold, scared. man. It's cold. You know, it's young boy, don't get scared. We got young boy and a lot of fans, man. They're going to be watching this, man. We got to do a good job, right? Oh, it's cold out here. Let's go heat up inside, man. Let's do it. Let's get into it, man. Rap right on podcast. Yeah. Hey, man. We're in Utah for the man himself, man. Young boy. How you doing, sir? I'm cool. Word. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you for coming. Absolutely, man. This is a beautiful. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Sometimes that nigga young boy be like kind of scary type shit. Not even scary, but just why the fuck he. That nigga just be weird, bro. That nigga be emo as fuck. That nigga. Thank you for coming. I'm straight. I'm chilling. Yeah. Yeah, see, nah, I don't, I don't even talk like that. I don't even think like that. No. Like, that nigga just be emo as shit, bruh. Place, man. You know, I just feel like, you know, people can say, well, this is a trial and tribulation you got to deal with, but I think you made the best of it. Like, it just feels like this home just feels very, like, you know, warm and just, like, like a dope, a dope place. Like, can you talk about why this is, like, work, work for you is, like, your home right now? It's just peaceful. Not too many people, not too, not too much to really get off into. That's a hell of a view right there, too, right there. It's a long way from Adam <laughs> J apartments, right? For sure, for sure. <laughs> or you said the dope, but like just being out here is like the best thing that ever happened to you, right? You love the serenity and just the peacefulness of it? I love it, like the weather, too. You like the cold weather? Because in BR, where you're from, in Baton Rouge, it doesn't get snow and stuff like that, does it? I don't really like it as much, like I'm really used to it. I just like to. Mm. The difference. Right. Mm. So out of all the places in America you had to choose, you chose Utah. Yeah. Did you feel like, it was it like an adjustment for you, like, when you first came out here? No, because I wasn't really looking to fit in or to, or to get off into me. I just wanted somewhere to go. Far from Baton Rouge. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you miss Baton Rouge a little bit? Mm. Yeah. As far as music goes, like, do you... How have you been, like, how's the process been different, like, working out here than back home? I don't know, I 
really just go out the moment, you know what I mean? I think, I think the music could be better, though, if I just out moving around, experiencing, experiencing more. Mm-hmm. And, but, man, I still, it's still the same. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. What way did you turn it up on your neighbors, man, with that black video? It's creating a party out here. I had actually asked the neighbor. I asked one of my neighbors. I should have asked the other one, though. <laughs> it was just some creative that was brought to me. Are the neighbors nicer out here? They cool down part of me. <laughs> but you definitely, like, you just haven't at all ventured out. Like, you pretty much stay on your own base at all times. And the cars ain't been touched. You got, like, an amazing car collection. And you're just sitting in the garage. Yeah. I don't really know how the neighborhood look or nothing. <laughs> what about, you know, you know, it's like, to get here, there's a lot of restrictions, right? But what about your family? Is it, you know, is it easier for them to come see you and visit you and your friends? And uh, they got to go through the same. Uh, the same procedure? Yeah. Yeah. But you belong on the foundation, man. You recently got married and, you know, had to, like, what, what inspired that to, like, settle down that way and get married and move in that direction? I always wanted to. And the women I'm with made me actually want to rush. That's how it works, brother. That's how it works. You got to get the right one. <laughs> hey, look, bro. Young boy just seem look. I've been saying this for a little minute. Young boy just seem at peace, bro. He just seem like he cooling for real. Like you said, he chilling. He he wanted to be ducked out the way and shit. He seem like he doing that shit, bro. It seem like young boy growing up like a motherfucker, bro. That shit. And I don't I don't like how motherfuckers be trying to like put niggas down over that shit. Clearly the nigga don't give a fuck. But like people be in the comments like, no, we want old young boy. We want new young boy. Like if y'all niggas was really. Supporters like that, yo, you would support, bro. Growing up, like y'all niggas, niggas just only like motherfuckers being into shit, doing bad shit for their own amusement. Like motherfuckers got to stop and think sometimes. Like these niggas is human beings too. Like they got family too. They yeah, the the decisions motherfuckers make that's on them. But still, like at the end of the day, if niggas want to grow up, niggas want to change. Like how the fuck. And y'all ain't gonna support that, nigga. You was never really a supporter from the jump. Like, y'all, the world likes seeing motherfuckers crash out, bro. That's the only side of the people that they like seeing for their own entertainment. They like seeing people crash out. Now that ain't right. That's how it works, right? Did you do like, a, like living in, in the home, did you, you do like a big kind of ceremony kind of thing? Or did mm-hmm. you go low key? Low key. You had the kids involved too? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. In the previous interview, I saw um, you did with like Angela Lee. You said that you know you never felt that kind of love, you know, from your grandmother. Did you feel like your partner gave you that, um, fill that void for you? You know, I feel like she doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that that's because you know obviously you you sort of not been real reflective of like the kind of music you make and the content you make and you know your responsibility to that? Do you think that? Sort of like having that stability at home is also a factor in that of how you're viewing things right now as you grow. Like the fact that you know you talked about you know maybe looking at the violence you put in music and making maybe want to make some changes with that, right? You think that you having a sort of stable home life now with a new wife and, and being in this great position does that connect to that in a lot of ways and impact you? Yeah, I, I think so. I think you have to make do it. I really have to be looking at other like young dudes. Yeah. Or like some people I've been talking to, I'm like, oh, your ass really bad. Mm-hmm. You bad now. I'm still talking the way I talk, but yeah. I think I'm going to just watch how I do it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't really have no limit at first. <laughs> I to... Really? We didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you funny, the good one thing, you said a very interesting story, you said pretty much a lot of it was, you know, you know, there's a beautiful picture of your grandma right here. In the home, and you know, we know how important she was to you. And you, you sort of told a story about being in a group home, and then you know, so you were getting sort of bullied and stuff. You said and that kind of like unleashed the beast, right? Like that sort of show, you know, a lot of times people end up moving a certain way because they've been like impacted, you know, a certain way, right? Like, and that, that sort of unleashed a fire inside you that maybe you didn't even fully know you had, right? Mm. There's another story though. Do you listen to some of that old material, the old stuff? No, not really. Putting out so much new material, I mean, I guess you don't have the time, right? <laughs> it's also crazy to me, the, the dichotomy of like how you know soft-spoken you are, and then when you hear those, especially those early records, just how fired up you are in the booth. Like, what was those sessions like? Do you think you, that's another side of you that just kind of comes out when it's time to record? I don't know. It's like, 
It depends. It depends on my mind. Just like the mood. That's what I'm feeling. Mm. This is what I've been talking. Yeah. Last year, man. 2022, you dropped eight albums. Yo, that's crazy. I think that's the most you ever released. Like, was that your plan to flood the market like that? Not exactly. I think I had that, like, to a certain number of tapes I had dropped, and I'd be like, I'm going to try to reach 10. Mm. So I just dropped one. What was, your, what was your mindset with that, that run? You know, you left Atlantic Records, but you went on a crazy run with them for a long time. And it seemed like, you know, people were saying, well, you you only obligated to do a certain amount of albums, but you over-delivered, right? You gave them so many projects. Like, can you talk about your mindset with that? That's just me, though. That's like just my work. It, mm. it wasn't like a favor. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing just planned. I just dropped music. Like, it brings some type of good feeling to put a type of music. That's mm-hmm. really tough. What made you leave Atlantic and want this new situation here at uh, Motown? I, I left Atlantic because I wanted to experience some more stuff. Mm. Or, you know, just try something new. Yeah. See if I can get more out of a label situation. Mm. Motown, it just came about. But then I actually just my specific label. Mm. I just, with each tape I got, I just go anywhere in the universe that I want to go and drop. Oh, you can on your projects. Okay. That's mm. awesome. Wow, that's how that's a hell of a deal. <laughs> that's what happens when you, you got the catalog that the young boy has. Right. <laughs> so you want that versatility in a sense, I guess, right? Yes. I rest my case. Even though, like, subject matter to me, it sounds like the album focuses a lot, a lot of on love, right? And they got, like, these skit sandwiches in between, like, top girls, top haters, the love of YB skit. Do you feel like those are real conversations people have when it comes to you and your music? I think so. Yeah. I think those get come very close to the conversation. So you like you're tapped in. You, you I'm sure you, like you follow what's going on online for people saying the streets about YB. Like you're not uh, just oblivious to. I see a lot of shit, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do see a lot of shit, bro. But mm. that's a lot. I don't see me because I ain't lit. Mm. I see a lot though. Yeah, you see a lot. <laughs> see. You're definitely tapped in, man. You also said with this album, you almost want to challenge, you know, you're not afraid to challenge your audience, right? Like it's a little bit of a different sound for you. Like I can see people talking about rage of music and these sort of terms. Like, what do you think of that? Is that was that your intent with the music this time? To be a little. Yeah, I ain't, man, dude. That, uh, I want everything black. I want everything black. A lot of people was talking about that shit because they was talking about, like, it's giving, like, and some of the other songs he dropped, I forgot what it was, but they were saying it's giving, like, rock star vibes and shit like that. I ain't see nothing wrong with it. I ain't see nothing wrong with it, bro. Like, y'all just want the nigga to talk about drugs, killing niggas, fucking shooting niggas, uh, like, romantic breakups and shit like that. Like, let the nigga, he still, at the end of the day, talk about the same shit. It's just a different vibe to have a different audience. But I feel like motherfuckers who aren't, like, entrepreneurs don't really get that shit. Like, they don't really care about that shit. From an entrepreneur point, whether you're a content creator or you're an artist or whatever the fuck the case may be, like, it's understandable. Nigga just trying to expand his audience and shit and vibe. How the fuck you want to vibe? If y'all really fuck with him for him, you gonna vibe to the shit, man. Y'all, shh, man. Like I said, motherfuckers just only like motherfuckers to see them crash out for their own entertainment. Man. Different of how you were putting this project together. Just trying to reach a different audience. Mm. My kind of music, I mean, it, it was kind of easy for me. Because mm. I didn't sit there and do it all day. Mm. All day, baby. Mm. So I just wanted to try something new. When you say that style of music, what do you mean by that? Just uh, sort of like... The sound my fans know me to have. So that you're not afraid to experiment, like, on the rest of my case, because, you know, it's a lot of different, um, a lot of different sounds. Like, it's just a different departure from what people are used to. You also challenge the aesthetic with people saying, well, it was, it was, oh, was it face painting or doing your nails, painting your nails and doing these different sort of style things? Like, what is, what's inspired that to do, do those different things, too? The nails came after the face. Mm. I was just playing on my face and I actually liked it. Mm. You should try it. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I got to check with the wife, but she's with it. Mm. But that's the thing, too. Like I said, you and, you and, um, you and your wife, that you're into that sort of the style of doing, doing it together and dressing in a certain way at times, right? It's not just you yourself, but also in a relationship. Mm. She yeah. had fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, like, when I was listening to uh, My Guy Family, you know, you had that one track, Control Talk, 
And he said, like, you think the rap game is slowly fading away because of fans' expectations, right? You still feel that way? That's fact. I think people expect too much out of this shit. Mm, that's fact. Our entertainment, right, at the end of the day. Right. You know, some people get caught up inside of it and actually get themselves fucked up on But it's our entertainment at the end of the day. Mm. And it's like, you know, they have their favorite rapper. And this person fuck around and do something like just show a flaw that he had. Was like, oh, he fake. Mm. So they go to the next rapper. And then they see the next rapper. Yeah, see, like, that's that shit I be talking about. Like, niggas just, niggas act like, and that's the shit I don't get. It. Like, these celebrities and shit, celebrities, motherfucking artists with big names and shit like that. Like, bro, the world got to do better with seeing motherfuckers as just human beings. Like, niggas got flaws, niggas got feelings, emotions, all that shit, bro. Niggas don't be seeing people like that. Like, they be seeing motherfuckers like gods, bro. I swear to God. I don't really think that I've ever in my life seen a celebrity, a quote-unquote celebrity or anything like motherfucker bigger than me. And I put that, like, on me. For real, like, at the end of the day, I always understood these motherfuckers are just human beings too, bro. They just got everybody watching them, everybody paying attention to them. But they ain't shit different. They bleed how I bleed. They talk how I talk. They motherfucking got feelings like I got feelings. Emotions like I got emotions. Like, motherfuckers be riding dick too much, bro. Motherfuckers get, like like young boy said, motherfuckers get caught up too deep into this shit, be expecting too much, and act like these motherfucking celebrities and artists and shit can't have flaws. Like, they not humans too, bro. That shit gotta quit. Because like you said, like, like you said, and like I've been saying, bro, like, motherfuckers be showing they not real supporters of you, bro. Like he said, an artist show they got a flaw or something. Motherfuckers just go on to the next artist. Oh, no, he weird. He fake. That's wild. Up. Like, damn, bro. Niggas are just humans too, bro. Y'all so heavily watching them. If they so fucked up and fake and all this shit, why the fuck y'all riding dick so much? You feel me? <laughs> why y'all be riding dick so much? Why y'all watching everything they do? Why you listening to every song they put out? But the moment they put out one fucking thing that you don't like, that you don't vibe with. Motherfucker, it's entertainment, bro. Everything, you ain't gonna vibe with everything. You ain't gonna fuck with everything. These motherfuckers is people too, bro. This is my human too. This nigga got some type of flaw too. So then they go to the next one. That shit gonna be old. The whole thing gonna get phony to me. You feel like rap fans don't have that loyalty to the artists like that they used to say? They don't. I'm trying to learn it. Get into it. Cause, Cause I know my face is a change, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got your support, so they'll flip on you quick. Like, you do the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. And, and you get, get that bad comment from them, too. Right. Yeah, so you yeah, can't just stick in body, body, man. man. Like, yeah, according, according to Illuminate, uh, in 2022, you're the third most streamed artist in the United States, right behind, like, Drake and Taylor Swift, man. Like, what do you credit to your success? So much more to be done. I don't really, I don't really claim it. I don't really feel like you never been done. You still, still feel, feel like, like you're just never satisfied, satisfied right? I ain't no satisfied. But it's just a lot I want to be done. But do you get any motivation from how much your music does? Like, if you did it and the numbers weren't as big, but you still be as motivated as the success and the numbers in that? I know how big you are. Does that continue to motivate you to put up projects? Because it's just having a point to prove. Just have something to say. I just want to admit. I gotta wake up. Three in the morning, some shit, just call myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still, still to this day, it's the same way. Yeah. 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 Still, just still, just still just still still. Right. I remember talking with you for a while back, and you was trying to get like get competitive and say, you know, what's your name and the ring with these people, but I think what's the difference about your success is that you don't look like you're really competing. Like you ain't got no brand. You ain't worried about it. These rapper rap lists. You ain't worried about competing, comparing. Other than the numbers itself. Like, like, if somebody, somebody can take pride in, like, you're not, not really competing with people. You kind this of shit, real shit. If we're being for real about it, number one, he ain't competing, he ain't comparing, whatever the case may be. Real shit. If he is, who the fuck beating him right now? Who the fuck beating young boy over the last decade, over the last couple years, bro? Who the fuck beating him? Who topping him? Like, real shit. Don't just go off how you feel, bro. Look at the numbers. Look at the stats. That shit. Young boy ridiculous, bro. You can't, bro. Bro, that's like, 
That's like comparing Michael Jordan and LeBron James. I know a lot of motherfuckers still going to dick ride MJ, MJ this, MJ that. Bro, when you really come down to it and look at all the different stats, if we really go off that, the GOAT is LeBron James and shit. That's what I'm rocking with you the fuck away. But shit, the GOAT is LeBron James. If you really look at the stats, my nigga, look at all the fucking different records that he done broke and everything that he's higher than Jordan on. The GOAT is really LeBron James. But y'all want to see something? Y'all y'all peep how when you get into conversations like that with people, if they on the other side, the shit that you supposed to go off of, like the stats and shit, the shit that they try to frame, when you push that shit on them, they flip this shit because they know you can't use that shit no more. And they just go off of their opinion and they feeling this shit, bro. Instead of the real straight up facts and statistics, my nigga. But look, man, like real shit. Can't nobody, if you go to the stats, bro, over the last couple of years, ain't too many people that can even compete with Youngboy, bro. Besides a nigga like Drake and shit. Who, who the fuck else for real? Let's be for real. Carl, what you doing? What, what you do? do? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I don't I think, think I can compete. I think I'm gonna lose. Really? I don't know how to play the game. I just go. go. Yeah. Like, I know the rhythm. Like, yeah, it's a type of structure. I just go. Like, yeah, it's a type of structure. I just pick the song. I just go. I don't know, man. The numbers are stacked. You can say, look at this. You want that accolade? But, like, what you said, like, you obviously know you influence the whole generation. So, so many, many other rappers, rappers like, you know, you'll, you'll hear big names like Drake, Drake or Cole, Kendrick, Kendrick from another generation, generation like, you know, you know for your generation, generation you want your name to be said, said like, oh, young, I got that from young boy, young boy, young boy was, what I was always from, what I was listening to, that's what inspired me. And to this one, and to this one be paid, I don't know, but I think it's all music to me, like, it is, because, like, it's all ignorance, I just want to be paid, I don't care about it. That's, That's how you judge success. success. It's, it's just, just the monetary, the, the money, the business. business. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 how yeah. Right. right. How, how have you gotten stuff? Like, like, it's, it's part of, I guess, moving from Atlanta to more time where you're now. Like, what do you think is some of the key things you've done to sort of, like, put your business in a better place that you feel more comfortable? Like, you feel like you're getting your value out of it in terms of what you create? What were some key moves you made to kind of put yourself in a better position? I don't really get a deal with neither, and I still don't feel like I did neither because it's like, no matter what, I've gotten from someone, like, there's somebody, like, no matter if I got two, two dollars, it's actually somebody making four of my creation. Mm-hmm. So until I get the business down packed, like, to like, a, like, I built my own team, like, I don't need no label, like, mm-hmm. like, this whole system is what I've built, and this is all I need to get everything out. I went from all of it, I'd be cool, but I don't feel like I did, and then, no different. So it's your vow to get, like, more ownership, like, get your masters and get your situation like that? No, every time. He got my word. I would say, I want every dime that my creation bring. Yeah. Yeah. I want every dime. I remember that freestyle you did over the story of OJ. And you said that you had a percentage in United Masters? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, so you had, like, conversations with Steve Stout and... Yeah, I mean, I had talked to him before. Oh, okay. I actually don't even understand what's going on with that business right now. Mm. I need to check on it. One thing to look after. Make sure, right? Checks and balances. You know, you know, young boy, we've been through, like, the blog era. We've been through, like, the SoundCloud era. And, you know, like, you're, like, the king of YouTube, right? So, like, when did you realize, like, that platform was, like, the best place for you to get your music out? I think I just realized that recently. Mm-hmm. But I always was, like, YouTube, you just, you ain't got to go through no steps to upload it and get your music out. You just <laughs> upload it, just to get it out right in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, see what you got to say? You ain't got to wait days until this whole situation over with for the throw it out. Mm-hmm. No, you can answer right in there. Mm-hmm. And less clearances too, like with samples. And yeah, YouTube just quicker. It seems like you're not the type of person to hold any music back. Like, is that driving the label crazy? I do have a lot of music I don't drop though. Oh, okay. I do drop a lot of music too. Mm-hmm. I don't really know how the business side of it be going. Mm-hmm. I don't really come in anyway. On the business side too, man. You know, a lot of these artists, you know, make their bread and butter on the road. But you know, being that you here. You know, you haven't really been hitting the stage, you know, in a while. Like, do you miss that element of uh, other games, performing, touring? 
It'll be fun to do, but I ain't, I ain't fucked up about it. Do you remember the last show you did? I was in Florida or something. Mm-hmm. What am I mistaken? Like, how do you even approach the set list? Because you, you have so many records. Like, it's like, you're not, and also, you're not defined by, like, one record. You know, some artists is like, oh, we'll just play that one record where you know that's their hit. Like, you, you find yourself in that that you're not known just for, like, one record. Like, you just... I had to go up the previous songs I released, though. Just ask somebody around me. Mm. Just let it be. Oh, just whatever the current project is. Yeah, like, for the show set, I just go up through the previous songs I released. Mm. Oh, what I know, they don't want to hear for sure. What are some of those? Like, what's like three essential, in your humble opinion, what's three essential songs for your catalog that you know, like, are kind of everlasting to your fans that they want to hear if they saw you like? Valuable Pain, mm. Outside the Day, It's Slime Big, 38 Baby. Well, that's my next question. 38 Baby, you gotta be on there. What's your top three projects you think you put out? I think 38 Baby to me, top in my family. Guy, that nigga dude got a whole song named Hey Pops and shit, bro. He don't even know if his dad didn't heard it. Damn. 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 Damn, Damn bro. I don't even know if he done heard it. I mean, I guess if he ain't tripping on it, ain't shit to trip about. But I feel like if I was to fucking put out a song about my dad or some shit like... That's the shit, motherfucker. I want your ass to I want to. I'm gonna make sure you hear the shit one way or another. You feel me? But shit, to each just lay on. You feel me? Going off on comments. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I just, just wanna know what he think about all this shit. Yeah. Like shit that I the people I have some myself about. Like what he think about it? Mm-hmm. Feel the artist and feel the get to know the person, right? 
nowadays and shit that motherfuckers see get on collabs and motherfucking shit motherfuckers be collabing working together and all that for for a while just like one two songs and them same artists a lot of these same artists that then collab and all that here down the road not too far after they beefing and then shit start coming out this was supposed to be like this this was supposed to be like that this nigga said this said that but that's because a lot of these artists just be doing that shit for the industry too much bro i like young boys take with that shit the fact that he don't just collab with any and everybody, like, he got to feel you, feel your energy, make sure that shit match, like, just as a human being and for the fucking music, of course. Like, he ain't, he ain't just about the fucking, he ain't completely just about the money or just about the whole industry shit, bro. That's one thing I fuck, that's another thing that I fuck with about young, but, like, he still keep that shit 100, like they said, he real selective with it. Who he collab and work with, bro. Like you can't just be out here doing that shit with anybody, bro. Again, that's that's energies flowing like all at once. That's that's energies, bro. On the song and just in person. If you doing the song in person and shit, like and niggas be weird out here, bro. Niggas be weird out here. A lot of people in the entertainment industry be weird out here, bro. On my mama, bro. I I fuck with that. I fuck with that take, YB. Must, Must be, be tough. tough to, you know, the music industry trying to do it. You know, <laughs> not a lot of good characters out here in this space. So does that make you more challenging to, like, maneuver in this business? Well, I just don't like people, period. Mm-hmm. Like, yo. Have you always been this way? Or just kind of, like, being in this business is just conditional? I've always been distant. Oh, okay. And I think this business made it worse. Did you have conversations with um, uh, Take Off and Quavo? Because you went on a few projects, too, uh, to the bone prior to getting on that record. Quavo sent me a song. Okay. They came out here to do the video, but I think something happened and they had me in a fucked up mood. Mm. So I had canceled the video. Oh. I, I regret it though. Oh. It's okay though. Mm-hmm. It feels like um you have a real good connection with Birdman. You know, guys done some projects together. Five. <laughs> You're number five. He's a good guy. How, how's your relationship blossomed throughout the years? He just. Dude, crazy, like, <laughs> he just talk a lot of shit, and I just like to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> my father, I like me pop that shit, man. Yeah. The actress. He know me fucking it, too. too. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's the same type of time for everybody, yeah. for, yeah, for sure. Is it different because, you know, he's from New Orleans and you from BR? Like, is there still, like, a connection, or is it, like, a... You know, a lot of shit that's like going on in BR, you know, a lot of shit still from the water. Mm. You know, that's like where the real gangsters come from. You know, a lot of shit got bloody at first. That's kind of like where we learned a lot of shit from. Mm. That's a connection. What do you think that is about Louisiana? Like, what, is, what does it bring? Like, that, that state? My thing about Louisiana is just different, bro. Mm. No matter where you at, I always know you will stand up. And it's also something in the blood, man. In Louisiana, you guys, you know, we have Master P, you have Cash Money, the Burbians of the world. And then you, you even kind of taking up that stance with your crew, the Never Broke Again crew, you guys for the compilation. Talk about those guys and um, what, what makes them so dope. Shit, what makes them dope? They're my brothers. Mm. Like, I still want to sing that song, I'm this nigga that you the person. Yeah. yeah. So, like, that's really my brother, right? <laughs> like, I don't think a lot of them want to rap. Mm. I think it's just something that the group into right now. Mm. And that a select few feel like they can make it. Mm. And I think it's just some fun right now that everybody get into. Right. And it's free money. <laughs> <laughs> right. So podcasts should be good. Yeah. Yeah. I say to the people, yeah. you know, you have 30 people that give you like this a million dollars or two hundred thousand dollars just wow. to sign you like. Man, you give anybody a deal today. Mm. Anybody, right? So it's just free money. <laughs> Has your relationship with money changed? What you mean? Like, I remember one of the songs we talked about how like, you 
spend ten million dollars on taxes. That's like not being educated. Mm. And I don't know what the fuck going on. I'm not spending my money right. <laughs> Just having to double back and pay. Another word right here. You say you had like twenty five million for the deal and you came back and five. You leave a lot of big numbers here, oh, young boy. I don't really have nothing to spend money on. Mm-hmm. So I don't really spend money. You got everything, bro. Like that. Mm. I don't really have money. I won't, uh, you know. I don't know. My mindset, I just be want to make money. So my wife could buy anything she wants. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, I had my fun. <laughs> you're still young though, you know. You're 23. But B, so you got a financial advisor yeah. now. She don't look like she's messing around with with the young boy's situation, right? I think she's on top of it. <laughs> so does she make you like do like investments and stocks and these kind of things, or? Yeah, she be having me off into a lot of this shit, whatever it's supposed to be. Kind of follow the lead with a lot of that stuff. Trust her judgment. Yeah, I trust nobody. Does Bernie give you like pointers too? You know, when it comes to financial literacy and things like that. Um, we don't really talk about money. Mm, Birdman doesn't talk about money. Yeah, like, <laughs> we be we be talking about like some shit that we like thinking about putting up, but as far as like just money, mm-hmm. like we don't sit there talking about money. Okay. I heard that you guys are working on a movie too, uh, Ball of Blocking, Part Two. Mm-hmm. So that's happening. Wow. Did you see the original? Yeah. yeah. You liked it. What is Ball of Blocking? Young boy got a movie, bro. The young boy and Birdman got a movie? What the fuck is baller blocking? Look, I hope y'all don't bash me in the comments for this shit. I hope this ain't just some shit I don't know about. Because I really don't know. What the fuck is baller blocking, bro? What the fuck is that? I guess I'm going to have to look it up after this video. But y'all, if you watching this shit right now, comment down below. What the hell is baller blocking? Have y'all seen it? Because I don't know what the fuck they talk about right now, but... Clearly, it's a movie or something. I don't know what the fuck going on, bro. Hell yeah, boy. That's a classic. <laughs> classic. classic. You watched it? Classic. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Did you have to, like, take acting classes? Like, how was your acting? <laughs> 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 That's a dope girl, boy. <laughs> Did you get any acting classes? No, I didn't get no acting classes. Mm-hmm. Like, what was your acting class like? 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 I think that's you know, culture. It's a cultural moment. I'm looking forward to seeing you, man. I'm looking forward to seeing myself. <laughs> oh, so it's all done? Good. Yeah. Okay. You know, started, Jim. Oh, you started? Okay. And you also started to stop the violence campaign, man. I like this. I like this direction that you're going in, young boy. Can you talk about that initiative? Yeah, I don't really want to get off into it. Yeah. Man, that shit, I don't, I don't think it's, it's, getting out of, it's getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. So I like. Bitch ass niggas. <laughs> like, you starting to have demons with, with a lot of shit. Yeah. Nah, you just sometimes you'd be like two gangsters. Like, just live at the age of a nigga. Nah, like, they like, we're like bitches that's provoke, provoking and like just manipulating people. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it. I ain't cool. I ain't cool yet. Right. Man, I got like just some bitch ass shit going on my day, bro. This shit bullshit, bro. You just ain't feeling it. Yeah, just, <laughs> hey, stop the violence, man. Right. I hope you do so. Just make sure you got a very good meaning, like, Y'all can tell there's way more he wanna say to this shit right now. He wanna, <laughs> he wanna do some shit. He ready to clash out, bro. They got babies, killing babies, man, this shit. Yeah. But they got niggas at 16 and all the boy in the suit, you know. Yeah. That shit battles. Yeah. But you gotta think about it. It's another bitch ass nigga who provoking the young nigga to walk up on and hit you with this bitch up. Mm-hmm. Just cause he ain't he ain't really cut like that himself for that shit. Walk up on him and just spank you right here. So he gonna tell you, he know you ain't got no mind. He know you ain't from the pocket from everybody. Right. No impression kill. Yeah, yeah. Man, this shit just baffled. It's like, I don't know what to say. You just can't take advantage of it. Yeah, man. Man, I ain't got no shit going on right now. A lot of pussy shit, a lot of niggas getting ready to tell them each other too. So you feel like, like, you know, even back home, do you feel like a responsibility you want to help some of those youth back in the Baton Rouge? Shit, I don't help the youth anyway. Anyway, okay. You know, I have a lot of understanding. I think, like, I would, would a lot of the youth want you to just actually see what you and get that belief of knowing what you actually can go or just come in contact with and have, like, I think that's gonna be just 
try to see it and then clip. When, when did you realize, realize that you started to have this impact on like youth culture? Was there a moment specifically? That shit just come from somebody saying, oh, they are listening to you when you say it. Right. It ain't even bad to say so I see it. Mm. I hope they listen to me. Yeah. And like you said, this isn't like you trying to clean all every single lyric. Like you're just doing the best you can. But, yeah. <laughs> but more intentional in terms of like, you know, well, I guess more like kind of violence and things like that. That, that, that type of talk unless it's warranted in a sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, that conversation with Bill when you say you're not going back to who you used to be. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that person? I still laugh about that person. <laughs> it just ain't the right person. Mm. Not the right person to be. Let me see what. I don't know. I just like over here. Thing like you just accomplished all that. Just being given. Like, you look at down food. Mm. If you stay the same, like right. Yeah. And like you have to like get off of this and like just go back to the north side or something like. Supposed to be like a big kind of thing. I did all this to make it from this bitch. I told you guys I did all this shit to make it from my right Just to come back with all this money and do the same thing. That's like, that's hustling back. Hell yeah, look, I paused him when he was saying it, but nigga, that's hustling backwards, where Real shit, you do, look, and that's the problem with a lot of these niggas today, bro. That's the problem with a lot of motherfuckers. Y'all be spending all this time hustling this shit. Just to stay in the same spot, bro. The whole point of hustling, my nigga. The whole point of hustling is not to stay there, bro. It's to hustle your way out. Get out of where you at. Get out them setbacks, bro. Get out that L. Flip them L's to W's, bro. That's the whole point of hustling. The way that a lot of these niggas' mind is messed up nowadays, bro. They they think the goal of hustling is to stay in it. Be the number one. Be the top dog forever, bro. Niggas out here dying at 50 years old and shit. Because you think you still out here running with the young dudes that's 19, 20, 21 and shit. Oh, because you hustling and shit. Nigga, you a gangster and all that shit. Nigga, you don't go sit down with your 12 motherfucking baby mamas and kids, bro. Niggas be hustling backwards, bro. That's that shit, bro. Like, I'm only 21, but nigga... When I, that's why when I see OGs, bro, and niggas be talking and shit, bro... Y'all niggas, a lot of these young niggas need to listen, because y'all niggas, your mind warp, bro. Your mind warp like crazy, bro. Again, the whole point of hustling is to get out your situations you in. Get out that shit. Do what you got to do to get you and your people out that shit. Not to stay stuck there forever, or not to get out of it just to come back because you got a point to prove. Nigga, you stupid, bro. You fucking stupid, bro. Yeah, you definitely got it. You got your... Uh... History on right, man. Because a lot of people, you know, they go back to this environment where it, it's like, like you said, hustling backwards. Does it make sense? Yeah. I think I heard the next album is Don't Try This at Home. Is that true? Don't Try This at Home. Don't Try This at Home. Okay. I want to talk crazy on him. He's back. Hey, wait a minute. I want to talk crazy on him. But I'm letting you know. Don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. It's all cautionary. Yeah, it's all entertainment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk my shit and everything I talk about. And you know, don't try this at home. You feel like it's a thin line between like reality and entertainment, and sometimes people don't care to differentiate. Entertainment and reality is very different. What I do think some of the entertainers I make their entertainment their reality. Their reality, yeah. If I say that right. Nah, you do. Nah, don't get me wrong too. Like a lot of people who you'll see today. Oh, that's a hundred percent I don't, I don't doubt that a lot of rappers today, like, man, I'm not a hundred percent real, but I can't tell you, bro. I'm gonna draw it on. Fraudulent. Nah. Fraudulent. Man, you're not this, bro. You're gonna look at all these rappers. For an image, bro. You're gonna see a guy in this video, right? You go to the next one, you got a guy in this video, right? Man, you gotta be a little deep with some time, bro. All right, look at his mom. His mom ain't no gangster, so how the fuck is he a gangster? Mm. That shit don't be adding up, bro. <laughs> don't try this at all? Don't try it at all. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. So as far as like the sound of that, you know, is it going to be a departure from where I rest my case is? Is it going to... You say you talk your shit, but sonically, like... What producers are you working with? Like, I ain't pay attention to a new deal out of the piece. So I don't leave it for sure. I record it all by myself. So you can engineer by yourself, too? Yeah, just sitting up. Record it myself. No way to tell it out. From my, uh, the right amount of 
my phone. Is there a wish list of producers that you want to work with? No way. What about, about like uh, maybe other artists? Less features, Less features on this is reason I'm saying, right? Less features. There's like Eddie in the moment, too. I didn't even work with people in the moment. There's some, some people that I wasn't expecting. expecting. Like, I saw you and Kalani do the record together. I was like, okay, I, I think, think that was cool. cool. You, you know, you do work well with the others in the right, right scenario. So, we're looking forward to that. But for the end of the year, I know, I know we got this project. I know you're going to. Are you going to beat last year? Why would you want? I ain't going to beat last year. I ain't going to beat last year. That's it, because I want to know how to stretch that shit, bro. Mm. Okay. Just have a plan with each drop. How you, you feel, man? You going to be the one press shit? It's about it. It's going to be the last one with you. <laughs> yeah, I feel good. Yeah. Um, I appreciate y'all. I'll say it's so good. Yeah, yeah come, come talk, talk to me. me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're super insightful, man. You know, I think it's important, you know. Like you said, you have a game for you to share your thoughts and what your mentality is, you know. I think, I think it's, it's important. important. No, you're a leader out here in this space. I don't want to be responsible. Mm. Yeah. So I don't really want to be the model, the role model. You look at the one stuff just as a tank, just trying to feed kids. Biggie had that kind of mentality too. Ah, uh, boy, because at one point, like, this really was my life. Mm. My mentality was like, come on, like, I'm going to say that age you went down yesterday, or they went down last week. Yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah. inside, like, I'm not like, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm. Like, I'm going to do this for you feel blessed that you survived it? Like, shit, shit, man. Mm-hmm. Man, I mean, the people that I love to this day, like, who still say, you know, who don't know what they're going to eat today, or who don't know where they're going to go to work. Like, shit could be so much worse. Like, I got a blessing right now, like, who the world know me to be around. Mm-hmm. That nigga probably just trying to figure out how you can get some money before they get in. Shit could be way worse. Granted, we're here in Utah, but whenever you are back home, what's it like? The energy, like the people just run up on you and hands out. That ain't never really seen me. Probably. I don't know. 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 I Shit, what we finna post up it? Mm. I got it up. And just don't hate you. You made the show, you recall. Yeah. You know how they pull on sides, you stick that nigga out that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it really is when you got up. What we finna post up it? Right. And that is it. You just watching yourself, man. Take time for that. So when you do come back home, whenever you decide to be a big home, come in. I'm gonna play. Yeah, I'm planning on going back yeah. to visit for a friend for now. I'm planning on going back. I mean, there's not too many rappers that's doing the big in Utah, so I think you're going to have a whole city a lot. Appreciate you, young boy. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Thanks, sir. Wrap it up, Pac. Yeah, we're out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're out of here. 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 And shit, bro. I think that was a cool little podcast. Just them speaking to young boy, getting a little bit more insight on his mind and shit. Bro, uh, like a lot of people have been saying, it look like young boy just growing, like, mentally, just mentally, emotionally, everything, bro. Just growth, bro. Like, and that's how it should be, bro. Real shit, that's how it should be. Niggas shouldn't expect him to stay on that, all that rah rah shit 24 7, really up in the mix. Like, the nigga going up. The nigga, like, again. Everybody else be so focused on having that warped ass mindset of hustling backwards. You're not supposed to hustle and grind so hard to stay in that same fucking position, bro. The whole point is to get out and make more of that shit, bro. And that's what it seemed like young boy doing. And he didn't did it for real, for real. Like, and he had peace for where he at now. How, that's how the fuck it's supposed to be, bro. That's how it's supposed to be, my nigga. But look, man. I don't really got too much to say. I mean... The video was straightforward and shit. Young boy just talked his talk, just said how he feeling. That's how the fuck it's supposed to be. But look, man. So look, that's the end of the video. Um, if you fought with the reaction, y'all let me know. Comment down below. Let me know how y'all feeling about it. How y'all feel about things Young boy said. If you got any questions or just any comments you want to say to me or whatever, just drop it down below in the comment section, bro. If you ain't peep or if you new to the channel, bro, I try to respond to all comments like for real like that ass i try to respond to all comments bro 
I be in YouTube studio scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I try to reply to damn near literally every comment, bro. So if you got anything to say or a question or just let me know how you felt about the reaction, something else you want me to react to, anything, just leave it down below in the comment section, bro. Um, but like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're a new viewer, go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, turn on the post notifications, bro. Share the video with like two to three friends um, that you think will fuck with the channel that'll help us grow as a community. Um, we're on the road to 800 subscribers, man. We're going to try to hit it within the next couple of days to a week, bro. If you're watching this video, I appreciate you for tuning in today. If you made it this far, you're a real supporter, man. It's like a 50-minute video, dog. This this is one of my lo Shit. It's probably my longest video ever, you feel me? But good video, man. Like I said, go down below, drop a like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to catch you on the next video. I appreciate y'all. We're to 800 subscribers, you dig? They said rainy days don't last for long. I'm sitting here thinking when these sunny days gon' come along. But fuck these bitches, fuck these niggas that left me alone. Tears in my eyes never cry cause I gotta stay strong. They said rainy days don't last for long. I'm sitting here thinking when these sunny days gon' come along. But fuck these bitches, fuck these niggas that left me alone. Tears in my eyes never cry cause I gotta stay strong.